Well, Coach Will Bolt, who will go straight to questions. I'll start with Chris Bastet from the Lincoln Journal Star. Hey, Will, just uh, I know you're a few weeks into practice now, I guess, just your thoughts on kind of, you know, guys settling into their roles and what you've seen through these first few weeks as guys have, have kind of gotten back into things. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun just to see some different moving parts with our roster and our team and uh, kind of the flexibility of some of the position players and um I think a couple of takeaways from the first few weeks so far is just the pitching has been, um, outside of a couple of days, been pretty dominant. Um, I'd say this time last year we'd say <clears throat> it was quite the opposite. Um, we weren't getting a lot of a ton of guys out, and we were giving up a lot of free bases, whether it be walks or errors. Uh, the, the, I guess a major takeaway is that the pitching's been really good, but equally as good has been the how we've taken care of the ball. Um, just especially for a fall and you've got the team split in half and guys may be playing different positions. Um, not a lot of free bases to be had. And, you know, when you're throwing strikes and you're not making errors, you're not handing a lot of stuff over to the, the other team. It's, it becomes a little bit tough to score at times. So I think our pitching has been uh, really good at pounding the zone with good stuff. Um, the defense, particularly the infield, uh, has been very impressive um, and I think there's just been it's been fun to see the guys compete the games have been close they've been competitive uh, we've been able to get out and scrimmage a couple times a week now for three weeks this will be the fourth um, and it's just been fun to see the guys get after it Evan Bland on the whole world Herald Good morning Will thanks for doing morning. this yeah you bet um, I guess I'm just curious as you go through any fall obviously you you can move guys around experiment a little bit could you maybe just run through some of the guys that you're uh, looking at uh, at different positions, uh, you know, infield, outfield, starter to reliever, just some guys maybe that uh, you're looking at possibly having different roles here going forward? Yeah, I mean, with the infield, they've, they've all been pretty flexible and played pretty much all over the entire diamond. I mean, we've had Max Anderson's played, I believe, every position now on the infield. Um, Jack Styles played on both corners and shortstop. Um, you know, Schwelly's been pretty much strictly at shortstop, plus we've seen him on the mound. Um, Efri Cervantes has played every infield position as well up to this point. Um, you know, Cam Chick has been bouncing back between the infield and the outfield. Uh, we've seen him primarily in the infield this week, and he's a guy that's gone off in the summer and gotten some experience and gotten better. And I think just the competition has made him better too um, defensively. Uh, in the infield and um, Jackson Hallmark has played center field and second base. Um, we've seen him in a couple of different spots. Um, you know, we've seen uh, several different guys play first base, including a couple of our catchers. Hellstrom's played over there. Griffin Everett's played over there. Um, we've had, you know, Banjoff. Um, Leighton Banjoff has primarily played first base done a great job. Um, he's a guy that we saw play all over the field last year for us in the infield. He did the same in the summer, um, and that's really kind of made him better just as far as having a feel um, on the dirt, and he's done a great job this fall. He's played a little bit of outfield too, mainly just in VP-type settings, not in a scrimmage quite yet. But, um, again, we've had just a lot of guys play – a lot of different spots and do it at a really high level, um, which has been fun to see. Um, and I think the catching has really improved. Um, just seeing far less balls get to the backstop. Part of that has to do with the guy throwing the ball on the mound, um, just making it a little bit easier on them uh, as far as getting ahead and those kind of things. But on the pitching side, we've seen uh, several different guys that have thrown multiple innings at a time. Um, so we feel pretty good about the number of guys that we have that could turn the lineup over. Um, so it, it's just been a lot of moving parts. Uh, it's been, like I said, it's been fun to see just the guys uh, adapt to different roles and, and throw some things on them. And I, I think another really cool takeaway from the fall is the freshmen have not been uh, nervous at all. They just have come right in and, and fit right in. Bryce Matthews being another one that I haven't mentioned yet, but he's played second and short at an extremely high level and, and swung the bat incredibly well for us too. So um, a lot of guys in there that may be seeing college baseball for the first time at this level, including the JC guys that have come in, and there's been hardly any transition for them. Michael Brunts, 247 Sports.
Two quick ones, Will. Um, we're talking about the pitching, I mean, is it kind of across the board that you've seen guys pretty dialed in, or is it more kind of as you'd expect with, with veteran guys kind of leading the way there? And, and then the secondly, I guess, uh, how has Schwellenbach looked on the mound from what you've been able to see there? Yeah, the, the first part of the question, uh, it's just been kind of across the board in terms of guys just being more on attack uh, with a strike zone. Um, again, part of that is, like you said, we've got some veterans that have now been around for a while that um, have seen the ups and downs of college baseball and, and maybe just a fall isn't going to phase them as much. Uh, giving up a hit or a home run, you know, in a fall season is not going to phase them as much. And I think really what we've seen too is a lot of guys make some significant velocity um, upgrades, I guess you could say, just – a lot more guys throwing in the low, even mid nineties at this point where maybe we had one or two guys all of last fall that were kind of in that realm. So that's been exciting um, to see that as well. And again, it, those two things go hand in hand, the better stuff you have, the more likely that you're able to, you know, challenge hitters and you're less afraid of contact. So um, we, we've seen a lot of that, uh, you know, across the board with our pitching staff and, and Schwelly, uh, on the mound we've seen him a couple of times now um, it's good it's it's pretty electric and again we're having to monitor and manage his throwing just to make sure I mean he's going to be our everyday shortstop uh, by all accounts and he's had a great fall offensively and defensively I mean he's just keeps getting better and better every day there so we're we're being careful with him and, and his health we don't want to risk anything in the fall but what we've seen has been mid 90s stuff with three pitches that and he pounds his own. So those guys get a lot of guys out. And, uh, you know, he's, again, as long as he's feeling good and healthy, he's going to have a, a chance to have a significant role on our pitching staff. Next, we'll go to Kevin Suits, Kale Allen, KGIN TV. Hi, Coach. I was going to ask about Logan Foster. Uh, how's he doing this fall? I know it was really hard for him to not be on the field last spring, but all told, uh, he only missed out on just over a dozen games. You know, what, what's what's his thought process? What have you seen out of him over the past few weeks? Yeah, he's excited to be back. Um, having missed, like you said, even though it didn't end up being a full season, uh, having to sit out and watch and kind of gain some new perspective. And he went off and had a good summer down in the CPL in Savannah. Got some at-bats under his belt. Um you know, again, this this fall, what you kind of see is just a little bit of a rejuvenated fifth year senior who kind of has a, a new lease on life a little bit. Um, you know, he's coming off of a, he had a knee surgery, I guess, about this time last year. Um, so that's something he's got to manage being the old man that he is now. But, uh, you know, he's it's good to have him around. He's, he's a guy that's seen a lot in college baseball and uh, he brings a, a, a bit of a leadership aspect for us. Andrew Ward, KLKN TV. Hey, Will, thanks for doing this. Hey, you mentioned the word fun like a bunch of times during this this press conference so far. What is specifically excites you about just this team? Is it just the fact that you're, you're on the field playing in the middle of a pandemic or is it is it the depth that you've mentioned multiple times? Yeah, I think it's it's all of that. It's just being a baseball coach again, watching baseball players play the game they love. Um, I think that that's the first part of it, just being out there um, reminds you why you do what you do, um, reminds the student athletes why they're here. Um, and I think just the competition piece of it, that, that's really uh, at the end of the day, if you show up and, you know, the bottom of the roster is bringing down the, the guys at the top, it's not, you know, you're having to, the drill work drags along, um, the scrimmages aren't very competitive. You know, it doesn't become a lot of fun because it gets a little sloppy at times. Um, it's a little more stressful on the coaching staff. Uh, that way, I guess from my standpoint, um, you know, when we can kind of teach the finer points of the game with guys and, and not have to stop practice because it's getting sloppy because, um, you know, we're just not taking care of the ball or the scrimmages just aren't competitive, that becomes a bit, you know, tough to handle at times. But, you um, we've been able to sit back and watch a lot um, and just like I said just focus on the finer point of things with maybe some freshmen that haven't seen certain situations but um, it's been it's been fun to see just the depth kind of we what we'd hope we'd have that it you know right now it looks um, it looks believable so that's something that um, you know excites us okay we'll go to Evan Bland Omaha World Herald 
Hey, well, I, I wanted to, I guess, follow up a little bit more about the competition piece. Um, could you maybe just kind of lay out what that weekly rhythm is like in terms of when you guys have live scrimmages and then also um, maybe what you and the staff are doing to kind of foster competition between the players uh, as they go through this fall? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so what we've typically done is we split the teams up um, and they're within their teams for the week. Um, and that gives us some flexibility to see some different things. Like I mentioned, like this week we've seen Hallmark mainly in the outfield and Chick mainly in the infield um, and just some different combinations of things. So we, we put them in teams typically on Monday and we start doing both offensive and defensive competitions where we're kind of keeping track of things in a practice setting. And uh, there's, you know, something on the line for it every day, basically. And by the end of the end of the week, we it gets a little chippy and that's the way we like it, just because the guys are they've got that edge that they're playing with. And that's what we're going to ask them to play with in the spring um, and just bring that type of mentality. So we put them in those type of situations uh, in the fall. So they're, they're just, they're just always a back and forth. There's always something on the line. There's always a heightened sense of awareness for um, just having intense focus um, in practice, which we're typically Monday and Tuesday um, are going to be really get after it days of just fundamental type stuff. Um, Wednesday, typically we're going to do some type of situational um, scrimmage. Today is actually going to be the first day we're going to have live a live scrimmage on a Wednesday. Um, and it's been Thursday, Friday scrimmages for seven innings. So um, that's been the typical setup with the weekends being off. Um, so that, that's been the typical setup, and, and that's kind of how we've gotten the competition at a high level. Can I just ask real quick, what, what are some of those things you guys line day-to-day -day that these guys are competing for? Well, sometimes we, we have them come up with a payout for the other team when they lose, but we warn them that if they come up with something that and they, they don't win the next day, that it, it's in the other team's hands at that point too. So, uh, you know, it just it could vary day-to-day. -day. Um, it could be something as simple as – the losing team's got to pick up the field and, and get it everything picked up. It could be light conditioning. It could be burpees, those type of things. Mike Babcock, Hale Varsity. Sorry, right, yeah, thanks for doing this, uh, Coach. I got kind of an off-the-wall question here. Um, in, in watching the, the baseball playoffs, do you ever have a problem convincing your hitters that the object is not to go up there and either strike out or hit a home run? Does that mentality ever uh, seep in? Yeah, I think, you know, that's the way the game's trended a lot at the major league level. Um, but I think just the approach that we take with our our hitters is just – it's quite a bit different. I mean, we're more individualized with – um, their skill sets and what we're asking of them. And, and some guys know that not everybody's built like Giancarlo Stanton and, you know, those type of guys. I mean, it's it's crazy watching some of those guys and the ball flying out of the yard. But, yeah, I mean, it's – in and, and with some aspects, it's you got to rein them back a little bit from, um, you know, trying to go yard on every pitch. Um, I guess just tr try to reinforce the approach of, hey, this is kind of your strengths as a hitter this is what we're going to ask you to do. If you kind of can run this off, then you got a chance to drive the ball as, as a result of that. It's not going to be um, an all or nothing approach. It's going to allow most college hitters to succeed. So um, on the surface, it may be difficult, but as, as stringent and, you know, just coach Harvell and, and Marcuso and myself are on the hitters, it's, we remind them every day. So um, that's just part of it. Kevin suits. Coach, on that topic, this was not my original question, but since you mentioned Stanton, are you team bat flip or not team bat flip? Uh, I'm team have fun. Uh, you know, I, I like watching the big leaguers enjoy the game. I think that brings out, especially the playoffs. I mean, I think that's really a time where you see major league players play like college players where they're they're having fun they're playing as a team they're they're getting fired up for their teammates something that maybe gets lost in the course of a 162 game season I, obviously this year was a 60 game season for the big leagues but um i enjoy seeing the big leaguers play like college players if i could ask mike 
Go ahead. Well, I was actually, I was going to actually ask you about Alex Gordon and, um, you know, you guys walk, walk by the facility with his name on it every single day, sometimes in there. Uh, could you just share with us your thoughts on Alex's recent retirement and what he means still to this day to the program? Yeah, well, first and foremost, um, Alex, the person is, uh, he, he's a guy that I've gotten to get to know really from the time he was 18 years old. I had a chance to coach him for a couple of years when he was here and, He's as good a player as he was in college and in the big leagues. I mean, he's just that much better of a father, a husband, a you know, a friend. He's a just a everything you'd possibly want. You know, he's a down to earth guy. Um, and you know, walking by that facility every day and seeing his name on it speaks to that. Just the the sacrifices that he's been willing to make through the years, um, and just the the impactful um, meaning that he has on our program. I mean, it's it's. He couldn't say enough about what he's done for Husker baseball and, and just to see him down the road in Kansas City, the career he had, what he means to that organization. Um, it's been really fun to follow. And, and uh, he's just, you know, you can't say enough great things about Gordo. Christian Horn, Daily Nebraskan. Uh, hi, Coach. Yeah, thank you uh, for doing this today. Uh, my question was also related to uh, Alex Gordon. Uh, you know, you were an assistant on the 2005 staff. So I was just wondering if you had any specific uh, Gordon stories you might like to share. Yeah, I mean, he was uh, just a guy that what you would hope to have on your best teams is that your best player, your most talented player on your team is the hardest worker. And there was zero doubt, there was zero question that when it came to strength and conditioning, nutrition, um, how he handled his business on the practice field, how he went about his pregame routine, that he was our hardest worker. Um, and that, again, I think that ultimately is what elevates good teams to be great is when your best player does those type of things. And he was you know, he wasn't a real vocal guy, um, but when he spoke, guys listened. And, you know, you watched how he went about his business. And it was – we had a lot of talented players on that 05 team in particular, but, you know, he was a cut above just in terms of physicality and the things he could do on a field were, were pretty special. So, um, you know, obviously the home run that he hit in the in the uh, Super Regional game was, was a huge moment. Um, I think I love the picture that kind of sums up and embodies Gordo as the one where he's covered in chalk and dirt head to toe. I think that's from Rosenblatt. Um, that that's how he played the game. And again, that's what you want from your best players. You want them to be this, the hardest workers, the most selfless, play play the hardest. Gordo was 100% absolutely all of those things, um, and it was just a joy to be able to be part of his journey in college. We'll finish our questions with Michael Brunts two four seven. A quick one, uh, health-wise, how are you guys uh, at this point, fall camp? Pretty good. Um, we've had a couple guys just get dinged up here and there, but, um, you know, nothing major, nothing that's going to set anybody back for any extended period of time after uh, fall practice. Um, we've been, uh, like I said, it's been a pretty – competitive setting that we've been in so guys are you know getting after it every day and um you know there's some guys that are a bit dinged up but nothing nothing concerning at all nothing that's going to set anybody back uh come springtime any questions for the group thank you everybody for participating today